You're welcome to the program. Now, the 2016 flag bearer of the new patriotic party, Nana Dudanko Akufuado, says it would have been prudent to set up an independent body to undertake the much-needed electoral reforms ordered by the Supreme Court. Addressing party members in the United Kingdom, Nanado said he would have preferred an electoral process which will be undertaken by an independent body from the EC, which the, commission, the Electoral Commission could also make representation on to look at the whole garland of reforms that are necessary and present its proposal to Parliament and to the President for onward action. Yaba expressed regrets that the EC is being allowed to undertake the reforms, a process he, he said is not likely to be comprehensive. According to him, the independent body would have had representation from all key stakeholders, including the Electoral Commission. Nanado has disclosed that the NPP has set up a seven-member Electoral Reforms Committee chaired by his running mate, Dr. Mohamedou Baumia, and composed of senior figures of the party. This committee has been tasked to put together a complete set of proposals on election reforms, which, when approved by the National Executive Committee, will be submitted to the Electoral Commission as the NPP's contribution to the debate on electoral reforms. Away from that, the Ministry of Local Government and Rural Development says it will, from 2015, begin a rebranding exercise of the National Streets Naming Project. Sector Minister Julius Debra says this is to ensure nationwide conformity to the program. The implementation of the exercise is guided by the National Streets Naming and Property Addressing Policy and the National Operational Guidelines on Streets Naming and Property Addressing System. The plan was to name streets after prominent citizens who had made a mark on society through their contributions to national development. But it looks like some areas are doing otherwise. So I've also seen a place where they, they're using trees, Mango Street, Guava Street. But the, names, the, the concept was that we were not supposed to name streets after people who are still uh, living, so it should be posthumous. But going forward, I'm, I think rules and laws are made for people, and so we need to um, give the final ad approval. In Ashanti region, I noticed they've done a lot of that, where they've named streets after prominent citizens who are still alive. But after, I mean, uh, we should be innovative. So going forward, I think we'll try and uh, speak to the assemblies again and see how best they can, you know, alternate names with trees and, and, and fruits. In November last year, President John Mahama issued September 2014 ultimatum for all metropolitan, municipal and district chief executives to complete the streets naming and house numbering exercises in their areas. Residents at Ahinkwa, a small farming community in the Ilokrobo municipality, of the eastern region have threatened not to participate in any elections in the country if government fails to extend electricity to their community and rehabilitate their roads. They contend the community has not had any development projects over the past 30 years. A report by Haruna Yusuf Umpuni. Home to about 5,000 people is the Ahinkwa community in the Yulokrobo municipality, one of the deprived communities in the eastern region. The main economic activity here is farming, but bad roads means residents cannot transport their goods and they record heavy losses each year. Community members say the electricity poles were erected during the 2012 general elections. However, not a single watt of energy has been transferred. They have been without electricity for the past 30 years. They claim that political parties only visit the community to solicit for votes, and once the polls are over, they are once again abandoned to their fate. They appeal to government to extend electricity to the community to enable their women earn a living through activities such as the selling of sachet water. Lower him, the boy him, 
keje pati olo president oni ninu se no go nema deji keji ka abinyo mo ebo awole wa hin o be ko nle o no ka vote ale ga we are part of ganes so ke wa ne je mo ebo a eh voting be on your be vote you ale ga mostly wa blo hu no e pe no go ne e pe nyo gba wo tro mi ke ye bo am je mo no wa api be ne wa na we blo hesi the Ahinkwa Community Youth Leader Samuel Te Okwampa stressed that the people of Ahinkwa Community have been neglected for far too long when it comes to developmental projects. Law Waba Sesai can Kaji twenty sixteen on Wape Wadu Kawa be voted because vote me, you know, I vote you. To our vote, a Kawamana, a he say, Wa Ahinquacha Mele, government or Po Noko Noko Hawa. Wa Blonga, Wa Beji, Wa Bejo, a he pesa pesa pesa. Wa Mahu, Kabasi, or Kabaha or Light, Akebe, Law Hijo, Wa Nina, and Mamio, Waba Picaki, Ka. Jano ke su vote ta mo na mo ballot boss ke ba na wa bi vote Haruna Yusifu Mpenes report from the Eastern Region We can now go to the Kaukudi Park where Joy News' sanitation program Clean Communities is holding a forum. Derek Okosam is a man there for us. He's joined me over the telephone as we bring you some live pictures from there. Hello, Derek. I mean, good afternoon. Good afternoon to you. Uh, what can you tell us about the forum at Kaukudi? Well, as part of the programs to round up clean communities for 2014, we decided to bring all the stakeholders in the sanitation and then the water and sanitation hygiene, I mean the watch sector together to draw joint to deliberate on the issues that are happening in 2014 as far as sanitation is concerned. So we have people from Water Aid, from CWSA, uh, from Star Ghana, the sponsors for Clean Community Show. And we have people from all walks of life, including the citizen journalists who were in the hinterlands, as we call them, to tell the stories on a weekly basis. And so we start around 11 a.m. this morning, and um, as you can see on the screen, Harold Seku is directing affairs here as moderator. And so whatever has gone on here is that we have been able to discuss and to judge on issues like cholera and open defecation and how we could get open defecation free areas. Um, there's one man called Alaji Moduk, he's a watch expert, and he's been able to get us insight into open defecation free areas in our front plains and how they were able to do that. And um, viewers of new research from the onset will know that they have learned a lot. And um, going into 2015, clean communities will not be in the pipeline, but it will be a reality. Uh, tell us exactly the, the, the line of uh, activities today at Kaukudi Park. Take us through well, it. Well, not um, too long ago, we heard from Stargan, the sponsors of the program. And then we also heard from Theodora Adamaku, and she's with, the, she's, she's with the CWSC, and then she was talking about open defecation and how it affected. It might interest you to know that most of these cholera-related um, deaths, as we call them, are as a result of we eating our own fecal matter in that somebody defecates somewhere, you have the flies, you have the other insects getting into contact with the fecal matter and then transporting them onto the food we eat. And so indirectly we are eating our own fecal matter and that is what causes typhoid fever and other cholera related diseases that claimed over 1,700 lives this year alone. Up from here we'll be, talk, we'll, like, we'll be having a debate to look at the issues that have come up and see how far we can go as far as 2015 is concerned how to get clean communities. Share the experience of reception in the area for us, as far as this uh, forum is concerned. Well, uh, we have been disappointed in a way because we didn't get as many people as we wanted here. But all in all, those the people who are, who are, who are here have been receptive. Besides the people from the towns, we've had the Chief Alaji Osman Yusuf from the Kaukudi area here with us, and he's actually chairing the occasion for us. And so, in as much as we didn't get a lot of people here with us, the few people who are here have actually been receptive and are following the program bit by bit, so that together we'll take this program to a successful end.
Very well. What should we look forward to now that the year is coming to a close from the program? Well, now that the year is coming to a close from 2015, we will zoom in into other areas and then work as hard as we did in 2014 and work better than we did in 2014 to ensure that clean communities does not stay in the pipeline, but it becomes something that is a reality and then people will know that it is better to live in a cleaner, healthy environment than to live in the filthy areas that have engulfed us. Very well, we'll leave it here. Thank you very much, uh, Derek. Derek Akosam joined us from the Kaokudi Park, from where you've seen some live pictures. Well, you saw some live pictures. I'll be right back uh, with some more. Don't go away. Thanks for staying on. Into other stories, Ghanaian celebrity Kwesiche Dakwa has denied raping a 19-year-old girl but admits having consensual sex with her. The matter is with the police and I'm, I've been joined over the telephone by Kwache Afre Niyama, a man on the beat for some updates. Hello Kwache. Has he been formally charged? Uh, not as of now. Uh, I left the police, airport police station about 10 minutes ago as he's still being held on uh, charges of uh, sexual assault but not officially charged uh, now. But I can give you a bit of an update uh, so far as uh, attempts to get, get bail uh, mm. for him is concerned by his lawyers. He, he, in fact, he just, he, I, I, as of 10 minutes ago, I saw him leaving his cell in a white shirt, uh, trousers, and he wore socks and slippers. He looked more uh, relaxed today. Uh, he saw me speaking to one of the inspectors uh, who is handling my assault case, and uh, he, he just smiled and uh, stretched his hand and said, hi, gentlemen, how are you? And uh, but earlier, I seen him eat at the uh, counter at the police charge office. He, he was eating what looked like a fried rice. There were friends of his around. I, I saw uh, Bolloré and some other people within entertainment circles. Uh, but currently, information I, I picked up is that uh, the, he's heading straight together with police officials, obviously, to the Cocoa Affairs Court as they try to yeah, seek bail for him. Uh, he was wearing a uh, black suit, and uh, they, they, they hadn't there straight now uh, in an attempt, as I indicated earlier on, to uh, seek bail for him today. Mm. Very well. Now, that's just an update on uh, KKD's case himself, but how about your uh, case of assault as well? How far has it gone after presenting your medical report? Yeah, I, I presented my medical report uh, upon my arrival here, and uh, an inspector has been assigned to the case, uh, and I, I, I was asked to write a statement. And fortunately for me, though, uh, on my, while making my way to the uh, uh, men at the center of the So immediately after uh, writing my statement, I told the inspector and two police officers, I led them to where he was sitting, and he was arrested. He's uh, currently in the custody of the airport police. Uh, mm. Just still following up to see how... Uh, Very well. Now, let us just come back briefly to the uh, alleged sexual assault accusation against uh, Kwesiche Dakwa. Uh, do we know why, till now, the police has not been able to officially charge him with, with any, any uh, offence? Well, what the police have said is that they need to, uh, in, in a sensitive matter like this, it's more of the lady's word or the, uh, the, the plaintiff's word against the defendant. So they need to conduct further investigations to arrive at a definite charge, say whether it was rape or sexual assault. So they are, at, at the moment, they have not charged him, uh, as you may know, they are only holding him. So it is only after they reach a point in their investigations that uh, PRO for the Accra Regional Police Command has indicated uh, that they can charge him officially. Very well. Kwache, we'll leave it here for now. All right. Well, I'm also joined by a uh, lawyer for Kwesi Che Dakwa, Nana Asante Bidietu. Yeah, welcome to the program, Nana. Hello, Nana. Yes, hi. Can you hear me? I can, I can now. We've seen the accusation change from rape to sexual assault, yet no official charge laid against your uh, preferred against your, your client. Uh, what interpretation do you make into this? Well, I, I'm, I'm surprised that you're saying the accusation 
uh, change rate to sexual assault. I'm not sure what that means because I'm not aware. I've always thought that the police were investigating a case of sexual assault. Mm. So I'm a bit um, confused by your own um, understanding of the situation. I don't, I don't quite understand. Well, in any, in any mm. event, the police are investigating. He has not been charged. Mm. The police are required to put him before court within 48 hours, as the Constitution says. And that is what has been happening right now. We're going to ask for bail. And we hope that he'll be granted bail while the police conduct the investigation to determine whether indeed they'll charge him at all. Mm, very well. How, how is your client doing at the moment? Well, I mean, I think he's in better spirits than uh, he has been the last couple of days. Um, and um, he's looking forward to uh, his day in court. Mm. Very well, Nana, we'll leave it here for now. Thank you very much. Nana Santi Bediatu is a uh, lawyer for Kwesiche Dakwa, who's been accused of sexual assault. Glad he could stay on. Now, the National Petroleum Authority will on Tuesday, December 30, decide on the price of fuel products in the country. This will follow a review meeting by the authority on December 29, following the considerable fall and the price of crude oil on the international market over the last couple of months. Meanwhile, General Secretary of the GPRT, GPRTU, Stephen Okujeta, says if prices fall or are reviewed downwards, they will have to take into consideration several factors before deciding whether to reduce transport fares. Well, our expectation is that uh, we have a threshold. And uh, if we should go beyond that threshold, uh, then we must also look at it. But uh, I cannot promise anything right now because uh, we are on a Christmas uh, vacation. Uh, we quickly have to call a working committee meeting and discuss it at length and see what we can Deputy Finance Minister Mona Korte has admitted that 2014 was a difficult year, but it is, she is confident that things will stabilize in the coming year. The country's economy was battered on all fronts with the local currency coming under intense pressure and losing value to the foreign ones. The city was at a point the world's worst performing currency. Government was embroiled in a labor dispute with workers with the con working conditions and issues concerning the Tier 2 pension fund. Mona Korte says the current challenges are due to government's investment in several projects and infrastructure developments, which in the coming year, 2015 that is, will be beneficial to the country. She said the flow of gas from a Atuabo is a good thing and will help reduce or completely put an end to the current power crisis, according to Korte. 2015 might be difficult, yes, because that is where a lot of mistakes will be corrected, but there is hope that it will be a better year.